Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thanks so much for tuning in and if you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. I just got back from navigating a portion of the Nevada Backcountry Discovery Route, which is a 900 and some mile off-road route through Nevada. We weren't able to complete the ride. If you want to see why, we have to watch the full adventure movie coming out soon, but it was uh, quite the challenge. Uh, but we just got back from that and I wanted to share with you sort of my setup for backcountry adventure motorcycling, including camping and riding on and off road, all the gear, all the camping gear and the basic bike setup that I'm using in 2023. Uh, some of the pros and cons to what I use. Um, and I'll also provide some more budget friendly options in the links below uh, as an alternative to some of the more premium gear I show here. But I do wanna show you what I use uh, just in case you're interested. Also, if you're gonna buy any of this stuff, please, please use the links below. It really helps support the channel. Now, adventure motorcycling is one of the hardest things to prepare for because if you think about it, you gotta prepare for cold weather, wet weather, hot and dry weather potentially, which we definitely had. We had all those things. On our ride, we experienced temperatures from 107 degrees Fahrenheit, and yesterday coming home through the rain and wet, almost down to freezing through the mountains. So how do you possibly prepare for that? Plus, you're preparing your gear and your bike for on-road riding on a highway at high speeds. You're also preparing for off-road riding at slow speeds, and you have to have a bike that's capable of doing both on and off-road. All these things present enormous challenges to this kind of setup, plus, if you're gonna camp, which a lot of people do on these uh, off-road uh, adventure rides, that adds a whole nother layer of stuff that you have to bring. So I'm just gonna share with you how I'm doing all this here in the middle of 2023. Okay, let's start with the riding gear I chose for the trip. Riding gear is a compromise no matter what you choose. I'm just gonna put that out there right up front. Okay, helmets. I own uh, probably about 10 different helmets because I'm spoiled. Now, uh, for this trip, I chose the Arai XD4 long time, amazing dual sport helmet. Tons of people use it. Uh, the Arai fits my head the best of any helmet that I have. I just have that Arai head shape. Um, what do I like about it? The ventilation works really well. You've got these cool events that come through the visor. Uh, the interior is super comfortable. It's relatively quiet for a dual sport helmet. Um, the, the, the build quality is super high end. Again, it's, it's an awesome helmet. Things I don't like, uh, the visor does not come with a pin lock insert, so it's hard to deal with the fogging. I ended up using a kind of an anti-fog spray. Uh, what else? The buffeting, it seems like there's a little more buffeting on this than with my Cryos Pro. So I don't know. Uh, also, the chin strap is not as convenient as the Cryos Pro helmet. Uh, and it's a little bit heavier than the Kraus Pro, but the, the Kraus Pro, what I find is the face shield doesn't really ever seal correctly, and it's just kind of a cheaply made helmet. I don't know, it feels kind of chintzy in some ways, although you do get the lightweight. Uh, I, I don't know, I go back and forth, but for all day comfort, nothing beats the Arai for me. Now with the Arai, I use a Cardo Pack Talk Bold. Uh, I recently started an affiliate program with Cardo because out of all the communication systems I've tested, Cardo, Senna, some of the uh, ones like Lexan, some of the more budget ones, I've settled on a Cardo as the best for me. I just think it works the best of all of them. Uh, and I'll have videos on that later. So the Pack Talk Bold is what I use. Music, phone calls, uh, talking to people on the intercom. I just think it's a great setup. Other thing on the helmet, I use a Ride Tech uh, chin mount. Well, it's not, okay, chin mount is another brand. It's the same kind of thing as Ride Tech, but this is called Ride Tech and it, and it mounts my GoPro 11 black right up on the chin there. I use a purple panda mic inside the helmet. Actually, I put it inside the cheek pad. GoPro 11, so I do use GoPro 11s. I'll link those here below too. Um, yeah, the GoPros are hit and miss. The quality of the videos is amazing, but they do have issues with overheating and locking up. I use one on my handlebars, on a ram mount, and I use uh, one on my helmet as well with the media mod. <sighs> Cue the music. Um, let's talk about base layers. Base layers are one of the most important things you can do in any sort of athletic sports. And I would consider adventure dual sport riding a very athletic sport, right? Because you work up a big sweat and you're diff dealing with different temperatures. So base layers. For cool weather, the best, best la base layers I've ever found, and I have a ton of different stuff, are these Moscow Moto Strata Merino uh, base layers. The bottoms zip off. They're also three quarter length to work with uh, armor and boots. The fabric is called New Yarn, and it's, uh, you can find the details on their website, but it's a mix of merino wool and nylon. It's stretchy, it's comfortable, it's antimicrobial, it doesn't smell. It keeps you warm, it keeps you cool. You can wear them as long underwear when you're sleeping at night in your tent, in your sleeping bag, you can wear them around camp. So I love that as a cool weather base layer. Now, hot weather base layer, I like to use the MSR base layers, and I'll link those below too. Uh, I will wet down my uh, jersey or upper base layer uh, and open all the vents on this Badlands jacket, which I'm about to talk about, and that cooling airflow will hit the wet jersey or the wet uh, base layer, 
and uh, keep you quite cool. You just have to keep wetting that down. And then in the cold weather or the cool weather, I switched to the to the Strata Merino uh, stuff. Uh, you can wear this also as kind of a hoodie. It's got this quarter zip. Awesome, awesome stuff. Base layers are super, super important. And for socks, I use a climb ventilated sock. I don't like heavy socks. They just seem too hot to me. Another base layer I use is the Moscomoto Graph. It's a t-shirt style base layer. So I always put that on first under anything. It just um, gives me that extra layer under there that I can change or wash. I carry two graphs with me and I, the material is amazing. It feels like you're wearing nothing. And you can also use it as a t-shirt. So I love that kit. Let's talk about a mid-layer. So I'm gonna unpack the bike in a, in a minute and show you how where I have everything packed. So I left it in there for now. I use the Moscomoto Ectotherm. I have a separate video review on that. The reason I like the Ectotherm, it's a puffy jacket that is heated. So you can plug it into the bike and it, it provides amazing heat. Also, it works as your jacket uh, when you're off the bike or around camp. So it's the only sort of warm mid-layer or outer jacket that I need to bring with me, saving room and reducing complexity. I love it. All right, the elephant in the room. Let's talk about the gear that I chose to wear. Now, when I say gear is a compromise, I really do mean that. This is the Badlands Pro A3. This is their Apex Predator, like best kit that Climb offers uh, for all weather adventure riding. Right up front, let me tell you the downsides. It's expensive and it's slow speeds and hot weather, it's too hot. There's your downside and it's kind of bulky and a little bit heavy. Now, what are the pros? The pros are <laughs> a lot. It's CE AAA rated, which is uh, the only Gore-Tex garments in the world that have AAA CE rating. It's all CE2 level armor. The vents work incredibly well. Just uh, wear a lightweight base layer and make it damp, wet it down, and then you will get that cooling effect. The waterproofing is incredible. Uh, the A3 uses uh, some Vectran fabric, and it's more flexible and lighter than the standard Badlands. So, I know this hurts, but I would suggest if you're gonna get the Badlands kit, just get the A3. I know it's a little bit more money, but I've also had the Badlands and this A3, I noticed the more flexibility, the lighter weight, uh, and you get the AAA rating. I just think that's what you gotta go for. So do I regret wearing this? The first two days it was hot and I did kind of regret being in the suit. Uh, I would have to really wet myself down, really utilize the vents, and at slow speeds, it was just hot no matter what you did. However, the last two days of the ride, when it got cold and wet, I was super happy to be in this kit. So again, downsides, upsides to what you're gonna choose to do. If I was doing the ride again, I might wear like more of a Moscow Moto kit with layering. So I might wear separate armor with the Woodsman pants, the rack over pant, <coughs> uh, Revit chest protector thing, mid layers, and then I'd wear a uh, jersey, a workhorse jersey, and I'd carry the bassless jacket on the back of the bike for the cold, wet weather. That would allow me to take the jacket off and pack it and then not be as hot on the trail. So that's probably a better option. But in the cool and wet stuff, and for the road abrasion protection, this kit is absolutely phenomenal. So pros and cons, you can choose what you want. Let's talk about footwear boots. So uh, I chose to wear the CD Adventure 2 Gore-Tex boots because they're comfortable and they're waterproof. However, I kind of regret that because there were a few instances where I probably could have injured my leg or ankle because uh, the terrain was more technical than I thought. What I, what I would wear if I was doing it again, uh, these are my other favorite pair of boots. These are the Alpen Stars Tech 7 Enduro Dry Star. These are a motocross style boot that are relatively comfortable and flexible. They're also waterproof. One of the only waterproof motocross style boots. I absolutely adore these boots and uh, that's what I'd be wearing for future BDRs. However, I was happy with the, with the Adventure 2 and walking around are real flexible, comfortable, but I'd, I'd recommend just go with the additional protection because if you break your ankle, it's not gonna be worth it. Let's talk about gloves. So I get a couple different pair of gloves that I, I take two pairs of gloves with me on a ride like this because temperatures, right, and weather. So the ventilated gloves I chose with a Revit Dirt 3. Uh, they've got the hard knuckle protectors. They're comfortable. The touchscreen thing works pretty well and they're pretty well ventilated. Uh, you could choose like a lighter dirt bike glove, uh, but you wouldn't have the abrasion protection if you went down on the road with those. And then for cool and wet weather, I chose these uh, Dionysi. These are Tempest D-Dry. Uh, they've got a waterproof membrane. They have some insulation in them. So uh, in the cold weather, they're good. Um, I like these gloves a lot. They're, they're, they're really warm and the waterproofing works well. They're a little bit hard to get on and off with the liner. Um, I also have the Climb GTX uh, Gore-Tex gloves and those don't have insulation. So they're not as warm, but they are waterproof. So I don't know, but I, I was happy with choosing these two gloves. Let's cover a couple other things here while we're at the table. Moscow Moto Wildcat Hydration Pack Backpack. I've used the Climb Packs. I've used, uh, I have the MSR. I've used the, all the ones out there really that you see. The Wildcat, I'm telling you, I know it's expensive, I get it, but it's worth the money. It's so comfortable, the way the harness works, you get the chest rig you can use. I don't use the chest rig, but a lot of people do. Um, they make an eight, they make a 12, and I think they're making a bigger one soon. 
I, I love these things. I have the 12 liter version as well. I chose to go with the eight because I had most of the stuff on the bike. So comfortable, comes with a three liter uh, insulated hydration pouch with insulated hose. Cannot say enough good things about this. It's almost like you're not even wearing it. Uh, other things, Garmin inReach. Okay, you gotta have one of these uh, or whatever if you want a spot or you want the, I don't know, Zolio. Have a satellite communication because you're gonna be in places where there's no cell phone service. This allows you to text loved ones or send an emergency SOS. Highly recommend that. These glasses, why would I highlight sunglasses? Well, I'm not sponsored by this company. I pay for these. These are called foamers and they sell them at Revzilla. They've got the uh, gasket on the back so they kind of work like uh, goggles. They see all the dust and air from your eyes. I, so I carry a lightweight, I carry like a amber color one for riding in low light conditions and a sunglass a dark, a dark smoke one for riding in the sun. So instead of goggles, I use these in place of goggles. I can open up my visor off road and have the ventilation but still protect your eyes. Can't recommend these enough. I have a bunch of these uh, in the garage. Another small thing, I have earplugs. So I do use foam earplugs, you know, disposable ones, but I also like to use these eargasm plugs. Kind of a weird name, but uh, the, the thing about these is they provide a lower level of uh, noise attenuation. So they work well, like with using the Cardo music and phone calls and stuff. I prefer to use these because they, they have a lower, uh, they, they have like a, a bypass filter or something. I don't know, I'm not explaining it right, but check them out on Amazon, I'll link it below. Um, I really like those. And I get the small version because my ear canals are kind of small. And so these are smaller to fit my ear canals better. Let's move over to the bike setup. Let's start with the luggage loadout. You've seen this stuff before on my channel, so it's nothing really new. Uh, the Tusk Olympus tank bag, I, I just find it fits perfectly on the 890, the shape of it. This is the larger one. I love having a tank bag when I'm touring because I keep ca my camera batteries in there, my sunglasses, uh, my charging, my little charging thing to charge things up. I, I just, I can't really live without a tank bag when I'm on a tour. Uh, so that's good. Then the, the main luggage, I'm using the Backcountry 35 panniers. Uh, with uh, pouches on all three sides and the backcountry uh, 40 liter duffel. Reason I chose to go with these is it allows me to carry all my stuff really waterproof, secure, safe. Um, you know, I've highlighted these bags before in separate videos. I love the backcountry panniers. They come off super quick, they're bomb proof. One of the, some of the best features, they've got the uh, beaver tails on the sides and the, the backcountry does have on the top. The reason I like that when you're touring and traveling and camping, you know, a wet tent, a rain fly, a wet pair of sandals, uh, a swimsuit, trash from your campsite, you can just stick stuff in those beaver tails as you're going. It's so handy to have that. I just can't even tell you. Keep snacks in there, whatever you want to do. Um, it does kind of encourage overpacking. So I am a little bit overpacked. We'll talk about that. Uh, having all this capacity, whatever it is, 35 plus 35 plus 40. You can get by with less than that, but you tend to fill what you have. So I probably have a little bit too much stuff in terms of food and clothes, but actually it worked out really well. Uh, and if you're gonna you know, go into a hotel like I did last, the last night, you can take all the stuff off really easily. I also use the backcountry cinch straps. They're the best cinch straps. I did a whole article for ADV Moto Magazine, some of you saw it, where I compared all the cinch straps. And of course I wasn't really allowed to like say a favorite, but for me, it's the Moscow Moto cinch straps. You can use them as a toe strap. They're so strong, they actually are rated for that. Um, they have the dual cam lock buckle things. They work amazing to, to carry the uh, backcountry duffel. So I've used this last year on my Colorado trip too, the same top bag and I just really can't live without it. The panniers, I might change that for a rackless system to just get the bike slimmer, less weight, and to promote carrying a little bit less stuff. Getting into some of the bike setup, the tires that I use for the trip are the Motaz Rowls front and back. So the pro to that is the off-road traction is about as good as you can get for a dot legal, a road legal knobby tire. Uh, also the longevity on these is very good for a knobby, the best out there. The downsides are on the highway, they're very loud and the front tire will wear unevenly uh, over time, plus, which all knobbies do. Uh, but the biggest downside for me is that front rowels on the freeway with rain grooves, it's really wobbly. Now, I have a Scott steering stabilizer so I can cheat and just turn that up the, my Scott's damper and I don't feel the wobble. But for most of you, I'd probably use a dual venture front tire uh, instead of the uh, rowels. But in the sand and stuff, man, these things save my life out there in the sand. So I like those. Bike protection, so I use the Tusk Deflex handguards. 
and I'll talk about the handlebars in a minute. I use the AXP skid plate. I've used a lot of skid plates for the 890s and the 901s. I just prefer the AXP. It goes on and off really easily. Uh, it's super, it's lightweight for the amount of protection it offers and it doesn't mount to the engine. So if you take an impact, it's not gonna transfer that impact into like a bolt that goes in the engine to break your engine. I do have experience breaking engines on these bikes. So that's why I'm using the AXP now. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Now the downside of that AXP is you cannot use a center stand when you use the AXP. Having a center stand would be kind of nice, but I can live without it. What else on the bike? So let's talk about uh, the navigation. So Garmin Zumo XT, I've been thinking about getting the XT2, but I just didn't really want to spend the 500 bucks or whatever it is. So the XT works fine for me. I have it on a Vanash uh, Motorsports mount, which I highly, highly recommend checking them out. I have some other Vanash parts on the bike. Uh, really, really good to check them out. USA made independent uh, family owned company. Another thing I really wouldn't be without are my Cyclops Mini Explorer uh, LED lights. They have 15,000 lumens. So if you end up out at night, uh, which I do sometimes on this bike, you can light up the road like being in the day. It's incredible. They tie into your high beam switch. So no extra switches. I uh, really highly recommend that setup. Those will be linked here below. I use on the seat, I use something called a cool cover seat cover. Uh, I'll, and the, you know, the reason I like those, I put them on all my bikes is because I sweat less on my butt and I don't get the rash. Um, it also improves the seating comfort. So it looks like a gimmick, but it is not a gimmick, trust me. And I pay for these. I don't have any sort of deal with that company at all, uh, but I put them on all my bikes. Highly recommend, check those out. A couple more things uh, from Fast Company. Uh, I've got the Flex handlebars uh, and the Impact Adventure foot pegs. So the handlebars have Flex in them. The difference that it makes is you don't feel the bumps and the rocks nearly as much. It smooths out the whole, all the impacts coming through the bike. It's incredible the difference that it makes on a whole day of backcountry riding. I know they're expensive. Okay, I get it. Trust me. But are they worth it? In my opinion, yes. And you can get them in whatever uh, sweep or whatever bend you want. I use a 15 degree on the 890 and on my 350, I use a 12 degree bar. So those are my setups. These are the adventure version, which are a little bit longer to give you more room for the controls. Cannot say enough good things about these. I've used them for years and years and years and I swear by them. I just tried the uh, Impact Moto pegs. Now I thought, okay, if you put the elastomer thing in the pegs, is you really gonna notice that? Actually, yes. You don't feel the engine buzz through the foot pegs anymore and it does seem to take out, take out some of the chatter from the trail. They're also really wide, which gives me kind of power steering on the bike. There's a lot of foot peg options out there, a lot of good options, but these, these are probably my favorite that I've ever tried for an adventure bike. I also liked them so much, I put a pair on my 350. So yeah, I would highly check those out. I'll link those below here, Rocky Mountain sells them. A few more things I have, a quad lock phone mount. I use the wireless uh, uh, charger, the wireless waterproof charger is the version I use, the vibration uh, dampener thing, and I hooked that up to a Ram uh, Tough Claw mount on a little Ram arm. So that's a cool setup for that. You can clamp it to almost anywhere. Double take mirrors, always like to have those. I've got Tusk uh, heated grips, which are a very budget option compared to getting OEM heated grips. Uh, what else? So the Pueys wind deflector, this is awesome because I can direct wind into my jacket and helmet to cool off, or I can adjust the wind to sort of go over my head. This thing is worth its weight in gold. Don't get the cheap Amazon one. My buddy Jeff had that one on the ride and it broke the, within a mile of going off road. So get the Pueys one, it's well worth the extra money. It makes a huge difference and they make different sizes. This is the medium size. I think those are the main things on the bike. There's a lot of other small stuff here that I'm gonna cover later in a separate bike build video. So make sure you're subscribed so you can check that out later. To break down a little bit what I have in the bag, some of the camping gear that I have. Now, should you even camp? I think that's a, more of a philosophical thing about what kind of experience you wanna have with your adventure riding. There are pros and cons to it. I don't think it's either yes or no. For me, sometimes I really enjoy just staying at a hotel, getting a better night's sleep, taking a shower, because you get gross after a day of, you know, dual sport riding, man. I don't know. There's pros and cons. Plus, this adds a lot of weight uh, to your setup. But anyway, let's talk briefly about what I have. Now, I'm not the best motorcycle camper in the world. I've been doing it for probably 15 or 20 years, but there's people that do it better than me, and you can watch their videos. Uh, let's just kind of break down the bags real quick. So I, water. Here's the thing, you gotta add a lot of weight of water because how are you gonna, if you, we did the dispersed camping with no water source. So you need water uh, to cook, to brush your teeth, to drink. Um, so I carried uh, three liters, two, two one and a half liter Nalgene bottles and I stuck them in these, the pockets on the backcountry panniers. Pretty cool setup. The water does get hot if you ride with it all day. Uh, let's break down, let's break down the panniers, okay? 
So these waterproof pockets, I use them to carry my uh, change of gloves. And I also had, this is my little first aid kit that I just put together on my own. So you've got that, take out the bottle. I gotta unpack all this stuff anyway, right? Okay, I literally just got home last night from this trip. That's why I'm doing this right now. Camping gear. This is a Nemo Tensor sleeping pad. It packs small. This is the wide and long version because I like a little extra room. It's a good sleeping pad. Is it as good as sleeping on a real bed? No, but I do recommend it and I'll link that below. Uh, this is my tent uh, that I put in a compression bag. Uh, this is an REI, I think Passage 2. It's a two person tent, freestanding, simple setup, uh, no complexity, it's not very expensive, and I, I just love this tent. I don't think you need anything fancier than that. This is my sleeping bag. This is also in a compression sack. You gotta use these compression sacks. You can get these on Amazon or whatever, at your local REI if you want. Um, my sleeping pag bag is a Kelty 20 degree down bag. So that's pretty good. I also have this. This is a Sea to Summit Thermalite Reactor Extreme. This, extend, this is a liner basically for warmth. This will extend your temperature comfort another maybe 10 degrees or so. It's awesome to have that when you start to get those freezing nights to keep you warm so you can sleep. Because if you can't sleep, you really can't ride well. For pillows, I use these. These are Hike, hike Insure, I don't know, some cheap Amazon ones. They're inflatable. Are they as good as a real pillow? Nope, but you do have pillows. I bring two of them. This is the multi-tool I got from Amazon. It has a, a hammer uh, so I can pound in my tent stakes. And it's also kind of a nice multi-tool. It's probably worth the weight and size. It, I mean, it's not that big. Uh, this, this thing is bloody awesome. Okay, this is a flex tech, flex tail uh, inflator, for miniature battery inflator for my sleeping pad. So you can also, you can also blow dry your hair, which is very important when you're adventure riding. Uh, this is awesome because you don't have to blow up your sleeping pad anymore. I don't really want to break that by dropping it. Okay, that's that. Uh, let's open up the top duffel here. I had some uh, baby wipes in this pouch here. Let's get this, get this open. Baby wipes are good because for wiping your bottom uh, or for cleaning yourself. I also carry shower wipes as well. I carry snacks in the beaver tail. Easy access snacks because you always got to have snacks. I carry my tent poles in the tent pole bag of the backcountry duffel. The stakes and the poles are both in there. This is not uh, how I had things packed. I kind of reorganized things that I spent the last night at a hotel. So I took this duffel off the bag into the room and left the panniers on the bike. Um, I carry this little, into this small little cooler, you know, just whatever, I probably stole it from my wife. Uh, if I want to pick up food uh, before we go out to camp. I carry, uh, this is a Moscow Moto 20 liter dry sack. You get a lot of these if you buy Moscow bags. I put my dirty clothes on one of these so it doesn't stink up the rest of my stuff. I've got my toiletries bag here. These are, uh, these are shoes, really packable like camp shoes that are, don't take much room because you don't want to wear your motocross boots around camp or if you go to dinner or whatever. Um, these are Tesla shoes so i guess they're you got to be really low carbon impact and energy efficient when you're walking around no those are amazon you can get them cheap on amazon i'll i'll try to link to them below if they still make them uh this is my compression bag for my clean clothes so i carry like extra long underwear maybe a t-shirt one pair of thin pants uh underwear extra base layer stuff socks um again i could probably carry less than this but you know how much clothes do you want to carry that's up to you I admittedly, I carried my Samsung tablet with me because I can watch movies at night in my tent when I down, after I download my movies. What else is in here? Uh, this is a Anchor 25,000 milliamp hour, I think, a charging pack. So this is great for charging up your devices in your tent at night. You can recharge it in your tank bag while you're riding, keep it charged up. And then you have, you can charge GoPros, cameras, phones, tablets. Uh, whatever you need to do, pretty good capacity. I got that on Amazon, I'll link it below. What do I have in the other pan here? I keep my ectotherm in this back waterproof uh, Molly pouch. Ugh. It really stuffs in there. So this is my ectotherm heated jacket, which we already talked about. Got that. 
Now, uh, this is my food. So I used the peak refuel. Um, I probably carried too much food. Starbucks via instant coffee, gotta have coffee. I had some vegetarian stuff, peak refuel. They taste pretty good. I also had some of their breakfast. I probably uh, carried too much of this. Um, well, that's a long story, but yeah, we didn't end up being out as long as we thought. And you can buy food along the way. So I, this is probably taking up too much room and weight. Probably don't need to carry that much food with me. I've got a hat. I've got a camp towel, some shower wipes. I've got a water filter in case things really go south. I've got, you know, cooking gear, uh, utensils, stuff like that. For my stove, I used a fire maple. I also have the MSR Whisper Light, which packs much smaller. Fire maple is like a jet boil. It's faster, more convenient because the thing clamps on and there's different attachments. I have a pot too. This is a Sea to Summit uh, pot, which is really cool, or a pan, I should say. I really like this one. I'll link all this stuff. But the Fire Maple, I was super happy with. It works just like a jet boil, but it costs less. My Moscomoto Fatty Tool Roll with all my tools in it, which I'm not gonna break down now because this video will be six hours long. I carry a anti-gravity XP3 micro start jump starter. Man, that thing has saved a lot of people out on a trail. Usually not save myself, but save other people with a dead battery. You can also use that to charge up phones and stuff too. So I've kind of duplicated that. Extra fuel for the stove, my KTM toolkit. And I think that's about it. And then in the bottom of that pouch, on the bottom of that pannier, I have my tire. I have an extra tube, a 21 inch tube. I've got tire repair stuff and a pump. So yeah, my tire repair stuff. Uh, I've got like uh, some toe straps, some Velcro stuff. I don't know what else is in here. Some cables, tire uh, tube patch kit and pl uh, plug kit also because uh, tubeless wheels, 21 inch tube. And what's this? This is the MicroStart tire inflator air pump by Anti-Gravity. So real small, plugs in. That's my tire stuff. Okay, I think that's about it. There's other stuff here, but again, we can't go into all that. Would I do anything differently? Um, yes, I always change my setup. Every trip is a learning process. I think that's the thing about any activity you do, right? Um, if you take a point in time, you can say, okay, this was good, this was not good, I'm gonna adjust things for next time. Do you ever reach perfection? No, uh, <laughs> but you can, you can tweak things. So what I would do differently, I'd wear the uh, more protective boots. I already talked about that. I probably wouldn't wear the, the Badlands suit. I feel this is more like road uh, touring or higher speed touring. Uh, maybe when you get into slow speed off-road stuff, when it's hot, man, you just can't get enough ventilation. You just feel like you're just dying. Um, so I'd probably go with the Moscomoto approach of separate armor and layered stuff. Uh, we, we already talked about that. Although when it's cold and wet, man, this thing was amazing. Um, in terms of gear, I'd probably take less clothes. I'd take less food. I'd try to trim down my setup and maybe use a Reckless bags, like a Moscow Reckless 80 or the Tusk uh, Highland system, just because, yeah, I, I feel like this encourages me to maybe take too much. A lot of the stuff I never used. I didn't use the jump starter. I didn't use the tire repair stuff. I never got into my tool roll at all. I just used my uh, mi little miniature tool in my tank bag. But again, would I ride without my tools? No, because when you need them, you need them. Would I ride without tubes and tire repair? No. Would I ride without the jump starter? <sighs> Maybe. Less food, yeah, because you can buy food along the way. Um, less clothes, yeah, you can get by with less clothes. So th there are ways to pare it down, but at some point, if you're traveling for multiple days and you're in the back country, you just need certain things with you. So I don't know. Let me know what you all think. Uh, put your comments below. I hope this was useful and informative. That's my goal with this. Again, please use my links when buying anything. It really is a major way that uh, helps keep this uh, independent motorcycle journalism thing going because without it, I don't think we'll still be here. So thanks for the support. Uh, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.